The good news today is that uh, scientific publications have just appeared that put an end to the whole narrative. What one has been made to believe up to now is that the SARS-CoV-2 virus is so new that our immune system will not recognize it and therefore when the need arises the immune system will not respond in time with the production of antibodies uh, that they could save our lives and that's why we need to be vaccinated. That's why the whole world needs to be vaccinated. Now scientific publications that have appeared in the last weeks as I said put an end to this narrative because it turns out that the corona SARS-CoV-2 virus and its descendants are not so different from the old normal coronaviruses that it would not be recognized by the immune system. Now, to try, I'll try to explain this with this chart here. This is the immune system. And the immune system can make many um, components. One of them are the antibodies that the immune system will make when it meets a new opponent, a virus. Now, depending on whether the immune system recalls that it has seen this virus before or not, the response will be slow. A first response is always slow, takes about four weeks for the antibodies to be made, and these antibodies are called IgM, immune globulin M. If, however, the immune system has seen this virus before and remembers it because the immune system has a memory, then it quickly makes other antibodies which are called IgG and IgA. These are recall antibodies. Now these antibodies serve principally two functions. One function is that if it's a virus that the antibodies are supposed to combat, the antibodies can try to prevent the entry of the virus into your cell. This is what the antibodies to corona are supposed to do. They are called protective antibodies because they protect the cell from getting infected by the virus. If, however, the cell does get infected, then lymphocytes are there behind the scenes that will come out and recognize that the cell is infected and these killer lymphocytes have their duty to kill the cell. So once the cell is killed, the virus factory is destroyed, the virus can't be produced anymore, and you get up and go back to work. The other function of antibodies, major function, is that if, it is, if the antibodies are directed against a bacterium or a fungal, then these antibodies will bind to the bacteria and that will cause another arm of the immune system to be activated. This is so-called complement, because it complements the, act, uh, the, the action of the antibodies, and leukocytes. Leukocytes are the cells that eat. These are cells that are in your blood and they're circulating all the time and they're waiting for these bacteria to come into your blood, be coated with the antibodies and then they will come and eat them. And thus are you protected by your antibodies against bacteria. So we have actually two major arms of the immune system. One are the lymphocytes that are directed against viruses and virus infected cells. And the others are leukocytes that are directed against bacteria. It's like the Navy and the uh, Air Force. <laughs> Air Force, Navy. And both are really deadly. They take care of all the viruses <laughs> that you are uh, confronted with and all the bacteria normally. So, the question is now, is our immune system really blind to the new, so-called new, SARS-CoV-2 virus question? Now, this can be answered very simply. And that, for that, what one has to do is, one has to inject this virus or the virus gene into the body and see how long the immune system takes to make the antibodies against this gene. 
And this was done by three independent American research groups in the last weeks and published. So everyone can go and have a look at these papers and everyone should look at the papers because two questions arise. First, was the antibody response fast or slow? This would be fast and this would be slow. 30 days, 10 days, or five days even. And if it were fast, did the antibodies carry the correct label, IgG, IgA, or the wrong label? So what do you think? I'm going to ask you. The Americans measured in the blood the appearance of the antibodies every day. The people who are telling you that you should get vaccinated are going to say, of course, they were IgM antibodies because this was blind to them. But the fact is the opposite. All groups found out that everyone who had been vaccinated responded with IgG and IgA antibodies within days after the vaccination, which is absolute proof that is a recall response to something that the immune system has recognized. You may ask me, how can this be? The answer is very simple. Look, this is the hand, the grasping hand of the virus. This is the spike. And the spike is there to grasp the handle of the door to your cell to get in. The antibody comes and forces itself into the jaw, like the crocodile. The mouth is open. It stops the crocodile from closing its mouth. Of course, this is not co completely correct, but it will do as a picture for you, all right? Now, this key that enters into the mouth, of course, it's not a perfect fit. So you can change a finger or two, and it will still go in. And this is the difference between coronaviruses and influenza virus. Influenza are flu viruses, the real flu, all right, which has really caused pandemics because flu viruses can completely change the whole hand so that the hand looks like this suddenly, okay? And then your antibodies don't fit into that. But this is something that the coronaviruses can never do. They can't. It's, and so they can only change the shape of the fingers. And that's not enough to fool the immune system. It's that simple. And this applies to all the variants. So forget it if someone tells you that you are not immune against the, the variants. The fact is, of course, that the immune system doesn't splurge. It keeps its antibodies in a locker, just like you have money on a bank. You don't go around throwing your money out of your pockets, you get the money out of the bank when you need it. And that's what happens to the immune system. And wonderfully enough, another publication coming from Denmark, another one, showed that true infections with this SARS-CoV-2 do exactly the same, meaning that everyone who has had an infection, even if he's asymptomatic, you know, no symptoms. The, f the virus just gets into your throat, multiplies a bit, and gets thrown out again. But even then, the immune system responds by making IgG and IgA antibodies, meaning that you have the money on the back. This means, dear fellow citizens, that the herd immunity is already present, but kept under lock and key like a treasure but it can be mobilized at any time you want. And it's just, you know, this is like uh, a dog and his master. And the dog, this is the immune system. The master, in this case, would be the virus, all right? So the moment the virus comes near to the house, gets back, the dog senses that the virus is, is coming, begins wagging his tail, begins barking, throwing out the antibodies to say hello to the master. So, you see, this virus always first enters through the front door, goes into your throat, and it takes days to multiply. It takes days to multiply. And if it multiplies in your throat, it doesn't matter. It only kills you if it gets to your lungs. 
But now we know that this is enough time for you and me or anyone, because the Danes showed that over 99% of all people running around have this treasure in their trove. They have the treasure and they could mobilize the IgG and IgA antibodies even when the virus was only in the throat. Now, isn't this a piece of wonderful news? I think it causes us to realize, it causes us to realize that we can cast the dread of this pandemic away and return to our wonderful world return to our friends, our beloved ones, join hands with them and rejoice. The pandemic, as it were, is not existent as a mortally dangerous new disease. Now, the second piece of news I have for you is that this will not only cause vaccination to be unnecessary, but also says if the vaccination carries any danger whatsoever, it must be stopped. Because there is no benefit, and if it only contains danger, then it is the duty of the doctors and the authorities not to undertake vaccination now let me tell you something very, very alarming. So alarming that this piece of news is just as important as the good piece of news. And this comes also from the publications that have just appeared. So we'll go back to this chart here. And I told you, they vaccinated, they found that the IgG and IgA antibodies came immediately then they waited for another two weeks or three weeks, and then they gave the people a second shot. What did they see? They saw that the IgG and IgA levels immediately continued to rise, which is what a booster is supposed to do. However, now listen very carefully. Look at this. This is a vessel wall. This is your blood. It is now known that the genes that are injected into your body will enter the bloodstream. And it is absolutely certain now that these genes are going to enter the cells that line the vessel wall. Because these are the cells that they contact. Now what happens when the cells that line the vessel walls begin to produce these spikes? The spikes will then be produced by the cell and protrude from the cell surface into the bloodstream. All right. Now, these cells are going to be recognized by your lymphocytes that are born or given to you by the dear Lord to kill those cells that are making the virus or the virus protein, any virus protein. So, these lymphocytes are going to mount the attack on your vessel walls. This is the first way towards clot formation that, as we know, is happening all over the place, all over the world. Now, at the beginning, after the first vaccination, this danger is bad and is already terrible in itself if your killer lymphocytes start trying to kill you. But at that time, during the first seven to 10 days, there are still no antibodies. There are not yet any antibodies. However, after three or four weeks, there are masses of antibodies all over the place in your blood. And if you dare to repeat this performance and start to put those spikes out into your blood, God help you. Because now, not only the killer lymphocytes are going to attack, Antibodies and complement and leukocytes are also going to attack, thinking that your cells that are producing these spikes are bacteria. And they are going to try to eat your 
vessel wall cells. Now, this attack of the Air Force and the Navy on a single cell target has never been seen before. There is no situation because either you're combating a virus or you're combating a bacteria. Mixed infections that uh, go through the body are actually virtually unknown. So we have the unique situation that has been created by the vaccination that is in a way extremely interesting because no one knows what the outcome will be. However, the vision is so horrible and so awful and terrifying that I myself don't really want to know the answer and I don't want this answer to become known. I want you to decide to not take the second shot. Not only the second shot, but any shot thereafter is going to place your life in danger. That is what I am convinced of now, especially because of the publications that have just appeared. So, I think that was the most important thing I have to say today, and I hope people will sit down, look at these papers, talk about them, and I hope that my colleagues, physicians and scientists, will do the same and get together to see whether this may have a grain of truth. Because if it does, the consequences are absolutely endless. Or the consequences are very simple. We just have to stop everything now.